Jim Brickman presents Soothe, How to Find Calm Amid Everyday Chaos. Copyright 2015, written and read by Jim Brickman. This unabridged audiobook is published and produced in the year 2015 by Jim Brickman. Mr. Brickman, we have a problem said the medical technician. Those are not the words anyone wanted to hear after heading into an MRI exam for a knee that was causing pain. At age 50, I had searing pain, a date with a claustrophobic-inducing machine, and a nervous-looking healthcare pro in my midst. Wait a second, why was she feeling anxious? It was my knee. Naturally, my internal stress indicator was registering high alert. What problem? Was there a big issue? Was my fall worse than I thought? Was my knee beyond repair? Would I walk with a limp? Would I walk out of here? I might appear calm and collected on stage, but the truth is, I freak out. My first reaction is to assume the worst. I guess maybe I'm a stress junkie because I live on it. I feed off of it. And I behave like this for most of my adult life. In this particular case, all of my worrying was needless. As you know, Mr. Brickman, we are about to take you into your MRI, and some people get sort of wigged out, said the friendly technician. You know, claustrophobia. Do you suffer from it? I didn't tell her that I live on a tour bus for a big chunk of the year. I'm used to tin cans. Anyway, the technician continued, I've found that one thing really helps my patients relax. In fact, it works every time. It's the music we play for almost everyone who has an MRI here, and it works wonders, but I'm not sure that you want me to play it for you. Why wouldn't I want music that relaxes me, I inquired. I love all kinds of music, and I was pretty sure that they weren't going to be playing heavy metal. Well, this is really funny. In fact, I think you'll get a good laugh from this, she said. The thing is, it's your music. In fact, we absolutely love your music around here. People find it so soothing. Well, maybe for others, the truth is I don't really listen to my own music in my free time. Maybe today is a good time to start, I thought to myself, taking a deep breath and not just because they were about to jam my body into that scary machine. I knew in that moment that as someone known for soothing others, I needed to take a closer look at the concept and make it a priority in my own crazy busy life. Of course, I had a good laugh when the medical technician insisted she would play me to me while they got some pictures of my banged up leg. And just like anyone else, I felt my own stress levels rise when they put me into that big metal machine for almost an hour. Of course, I knew it was mind over matter in there, but I wasn't really sure if I was ready to surrender to the moment and find a happier place in my mind. So for those of you who haven't had an MRI, this, the machine is really loud. So there I was, lying flat on my back and feeling totally claustrophobic. Then the tech put on one of my songs, and I heard the bright sound of the tinkling piano keys, and my first thought was, gee, maybe I should play this song in concert more often. This is a good one. A few minutes went by, and I evaluated another song. Wow, that's a beautiful song. I thought, and then immediately felt guilty. I mean, is it acceptable to say your own song is beautiful? Finally, I just had to let go and soothe. It was like being on a plane, sitting next to the kid who's screaming the loudest. At first, you're really anxious, but then you just have to go into your own zone where the kid and his noise melt away. Well, it didn't take long before I was in my zone, soothing out to the rest of the tracks. In a strange way, I didn't want that feeling to end, although I could have done without the MRI part. It was a real wake-up call, and so it began. Over the next two years, I embarked on a journey to find the tools to calm down, a journey that has now become the basis for this book. So take a deep breath, learn how to soothe yourself in ways you never expected. Hi, my name is Jim Brickman, and for those of you who don't know about me, I'm a stressaholic. I have to smile when I write that because I earn a living playing the piano in concert halls all over the globe, 
and beautiful music and stress are not supposed to go together. Well, playing the piano, whether at home or by myself or on stage in front of a crowd, has always been the easy part for me. It's in my DNA. The truth is, playing music and the business of the music industry are two completely different animals. Ask any performer, we all have our own stress routines. Well, it wasn't always that way. My fingers hit the keyboard for the first time when I was four. Three years later, I began taking private lessons from Mrs. T, let's call her, a piano teacher down the street from my family's Shaker Heights, Ohio home. In those days, it didn't take long for me to completely stress out that nice lady who was teaching music. For some reason, I would just not conform to the rudiments of playing piano, which in her eyes was playing the music exactly the way it was written on the page. Oh, how I tormented Mrs. T from down the street. I couldn't seem to help myself. Even at a young age, I knew the music and the techniques that she was teaching me had no nuance to them. Eventually, Mrs. T, my sweet, well-meaning piano teacher, ended up telling my mother, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Brickman, but your son just doesn't have the knack for piano playing. His rhythm is all over the place, he doesn't focus, and I don't see the point in continuing these lessons. Well, my mother did not give up easily, because she was the one who saw me playing the only piano we had in our house, which was made out of felt. In, in fact, it was a felt strip with all the keys drawn on it, and no real music was coming out of those fibers, and the tunes were the result of my active imagination. But that piece of felt was my most prized possession, and I taught myself the basics on it. Mom knew that this was not the time to walk away from the piano, even though we were a long way off from a baby grand in the living room or concerts. Thanks, Mom. Without you, none of this would have been possible. It all adds up to a career that makes me proud when I stop to think about it, which I don't do often. Most of the time, I'm like anyone else who beats herself or himself up for not achieving more in the 24 hours we call a day. Add a little airplane travel to the mix with interviews and my parents and family, and you have the modern-day stress cocktail. Just add ice. Wait, do I even have ice? Wait, did I remember to call the fridge repairman? Right, that is on tomorrow's list. Well, do you ever have that feeling when you're mentally, not to mention physically, just stressed out by the end of each day? Or do you ever think that you're not moving ahead, but you're just maintaining, treading water in your own stress pool, barely keeping your head above the surface? Well, those questions, and many more like them, bring me to this book. In Soothe, I'm going to share with you the story of how a stressed-out pop artist learned to jump off the stress hamster wheel. Funny thing is, I may seem like an unlikely spokesperson for a book on soothing, but for those who have heard my radio show or seen my live performances, it makes perfect sense. The truths contained in this book are hard won. Let me emphasize that in the last two years, I've made a conscious decision to find real ways to limit my stress and find soothing moments. To that end, I've found creative, easy, inexpensive, and unique ways to calm down amid the chaos. And you can do the same. On these pages, I describe what works and what doesn't when it comes to soothing your life. I also ask for a little help from my friends. Each week, I interview experts from all walks of life on my radio show, Your Weekend with Jim Brickman. And they're so friendly and helpful that when I called them up and asked them for a few tips for the book, they were more than happy to contribute. Their personal soothing techniques have been life-changing for me and my audience on the radio, so I'm thrilled to bring even more tips and solutions to the page. Look for their tips in the Soothe Expert sidebars throughout the book. Each chapter features one of my major life lessons, along with concrete ways to alleviate stress and soothe yourself back to a place of tranquility or as close to that nirvana is as possible in our chaotic world. 
Now, I don't imagine you're retreating to sit in a cross leg position in a quiet room on a mountaintop and chanting, um, but instead see you soothing yourself when you feel the pressure start to build during everyday activities. Maybe for you, that's the minute you walk into the house at the end of the day and five people pull you in different directions. Or it's in the supermarket line when that lady cuts you off. Or perhaps you'll use one of my tips to deal with an overly demanding boss or a parent or a partner who just picked a little fight. The lessons I share will pinpoint stresses that involve work, health, family, love, parents, uh, getting older, diet, exercise, expectations, personal judgments, unforeseen circumstances, and that universal question, is this all there is? This book is packed with practical ways to de-stress, including turning off electronics and getting the right amount of restful sleep at night to repair your body and reboot for the next day. The solution to a good night's sleep might be simply lowering the temperature in your room just a couple degrees. Now, are you eating to reduce your natural body stressors? Or are you allowing drama to seep into every part of your life? What can you do right now to soothe and unwind? The soothing starts. Of course, we can't change the world in one book, and there will still be those daily stressors that hit us hard. What I hope this book does for you is teach you how to recognize stress while it's happening, dial it down, and then evaluate exactly how much weight should be given to the situation in the first place. So ask yourself, are you so accustomed to living in stress that you don't know any other way at this point? Simple truth is you are really the only one who can deal with your own stress. You give it power. You can take that power away when it comes to your stress triggers. It takes a conscious effort to manage our fast-paced lifestyles these days. Not all of us have time for vacations or daily yoga. And as you work through the tips in the book, I'll urge you to ask yourself, do I really want to continue my self-perpetuating habits or would I rather make time to do something soothing like going to a movie or taking a walk or cranking up the Rolling Stones? I'm also going to help you finally resolve the following questions. Am I a bad person if I say no once in a while? Should I internalize every twist and turn that happens? Is my personal judgment meter making my blood pressure soar? How do I ask for help? And is asking for help a bad thing? Do I do anything at all to relax anymore? Or is it just wake up, work, handle the kids, watch TV, and then head off to bed? only to get up the next day and do it all over again. This book is about taking your life back.